on an all-new Dr. Phil. A boy accused of murdering his siblings. How much time passed between the death of the children? Three months. Are you telling me that this child was a good candidate to babysit your 11-month-old? He wasn't babysitting. Did mom ignore the warning signs? It's reported that he squeezed a kitten so hard that he killed it. He may have squeezed it too tight. There were puncture wounds in its skull. Today we're talking about a story that made headlines. A 13-year-old boy accused of killing his two-year-old sister and 11-month-old stepbrother. Now, according to news reports, the teenager claims he smothered his siblings because he just did not want them to live in the hell that he had to live in, which he defined as doing chores. Now, it's hard to imagine a child taking a life, but you would be surprised just how often we hear about murders perpetrated by children. Take a look. It was a tough day at Western Sky Middle School. Extra grief counselors were available for students who learned about the death of one of their classmates. MCSO says the 11-year-old boy shot his grandmother in the back of the head with his grandpa's gun and then committed.
committed suicide. Young defendant in the Slenderman stabbing case has been given the maximum sentence. She pled guilty to stabbing her friends in the woods 19 times. A Ripley County teenager is now charged with murdering his little sister and brother. The prosecutor told our own Rich Van White tonight he's never seen anything as disturbing as this. Sadly, this is a reality that has existed across centuries. Fratricide is actually the act of killing one's brother. Sororicide is the act of killing one's sister. The very fact that these have names tell us that this exists in society and across cultures. Now, even though Christina's son, Nick, is facing two murder charges, she says her son is not some kind of serial killer, is not some kind of monster, and should not be in jail. Christina McCartney says every day is a living nightmare. She lost her two youngest children last year, and her now 15-year-old son is charged with smothering them. My son Nick was definitely a dream child. He was the most helpful, most exciting, full of life type of child. His siblings were his life. Nick and Desiree were very close. He would sit and read books to them. He would sing to them. My daughter Desiree passed away on May 7th of 2017. I was getting off work. When I first walked in at the home, my son had a hold of my daughter. He says to me, Mom, something's not right. Desiree's not breathing. When the paramedics got there, they rushed her to the hospital. I asked Nick what happened. The only thing he said to me was that she was throwing up. I thought that my daughter Desiree had passed due to a medical condition. Nathaniel was my ex-boyfriend's son. Three months later, Nathaniel passed away on July 20th of 2017. I was in my room getting dressed. My son was saying something was wrong with Nathaniel and that he was breathing weird. When I picked him up, there was not any movement. Like it was just picking up a baby doll. Within a few hours, Nathaniel had passed. The coroner said that it could not be determined. The state police questioned my son, and according to them, Nick confessed to harming the children. He indicated that the children passed due to suffocation. According to the police officers, my son expressed to them that he ended the child's lives because he wanted them to end the hell that they were living in. Nicholas was arrested three months ago. The current charges on him are two murders. The prosecutor just wants to throw my son in jail. And no one is standing up for Nicholas, so I have to. I want people to understand that my son is not a monster. Okay, um, Christina, uh, first before I say another thing, let me say I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Uh, you've lost two children here. Uh, very unexpectedly, and I, I can't even imagine what that must be like for you. And, and now you have a, a third child that's in jail and has been taken away from you, and you have another daughter, and that daughter has been removed from your home, correct? Yes. And why has the daughter been removed from your home? Both children <clears throat> were removed from my home after Nathaniel had passed away. Right. Um, the Department of Child Services put my youngest child into foster care. Right. And my son was placed with my brother. But now that they feel like the, the crime has solved and they have a confession yes. from your son, the children have not been returned. I have completed everything that the department has requested of me regarding therapy and treatment, but my daughter still has not been returned to my care. You are a professional yourself, correct? I have a master's degree in psychology. Did your son, 14-year-old Nicholas, smother both of the children? As hard as that is to say, that, that does appear to what he has indicated, yes. Okay. How much time passed between the death of your daughter Desiree and the death of your stepson? Nathaniel? Almost three months. You come home and find your daughter in the hands 
of your son unresponsive. Yes. And ultimately pronounced brain dead and, and lost five days later in the hospital. But yet you allowed your son to continue to interact with and in fact supervise, babysit, oversee your 11-month-old stepson. Initially, we were told that Desiree may have passed through to medical issues. She was having seizures at the hospital. They were questioning if she had had seizures before, which she had not. Um, but they talked about the potential of the fact that she may have had a seizure and may have choked. Um, and initially, nobody was looking at my son. When we look at your deceased daughter Desiree's autopsy report, it said immediate cause of death was undetermined, diagnosis prolonged cardiac arrest, five-day hospitalization with complications, severe anoxic brain injury with swelling and tonsil herniation, respiratory failure. And then her updated death certificate, which came pursuant to that on April 22nd of 2018, immediate cause, asphyxia, due to or consequence of smothering, manner of death, homicide. Have you talked to your son Nicholas about this? Yes, I have. You have described him as being loving and caring and that these children were everything to him, that he, he played with them, laughed. Yeah. And, and so this is so counter to that. What, what, have you, what have you said to him the first time you saw him after this? My first reaction was I just wanted to hug him, you know, because it takes a lot of strength to be able to say I'm responsible for this and to look your mother in the face and say that I'm the reason for your tears. But he did. And I can't say that I have forgiven him. Um, but I can't say that I blame him 100% either. But I have stayed in his life and I will continue to stay in his life because I'm his mom. It's reported that he squeezed a kitten so hard that he killed it. He was holding the kitten and may have squeezed it too tight. This kitten had three holes in its head. And later... I think I missed the signs of possible depression. Tell me exactly what he said and did when you told him Desiree is dead. Tomorrow, she says her mom is obsessed with selfies. You dress inappropriately. I'm not a soccer mom. Slept with her friend's ex-boyfriend. I didn't have sex with the boy. Then why were you guys up in the bedroom together? And partied with her at age 16. Were you drinking and doing drugs with her? No, they weren't. Okay, now somebody's lying. If I'm coming clean about myself, then you need to come clean too. That's tomorrow. Then on Friday, she claims she has a cyber stalker. These ladies have never met. Your stalker's here, Kelly. Are you scared now? I am so frightened. Why am I your target? That's Friday. Being a professional, did you not have some indications prior to this that your, your son Nicholas might in fact have some mental and emotional problems? The only thing that I knew prior to all of this is that my son had a mild intellectual disability. Um, he didn't have any behavioral problems. He didn't try to hurt anybody, no red flags. How long after this took place was it before he was actually arrested and charged? How long after Nathaniel's death? Um, it's, he recently got arrested about three months ago, so right. it's been almost two years now. The death of, um, of Nathaniel was July 22nd of 17. Yes. Okay, and in August of 17, uh, it's reported that Nicholas harmed a small kitten, and it's reported that he squeezed a kitten so hard that he killed it, and that it was very graphic in that he, he squeezed it hard enough that it was very bloody and 
its internal organs were actually uh, protruding from its body, and another kitten was also uh, killed at one point, correct? I just know of the one kitten and um, what led up to that. Uh -huh. um, that was when Nick was ready to start talking. I think at that point, he was ready to tell the truth, and nobody was allowing him to do it. From my understanding, he was just crying and was holding the kitten, and Mia squeezed it too tight, and next thing he knew, it was just, it was gone. Well, there were also three puncture wounds in its skull. Yeah, I don't know the information behind that. And you say that he was actually a good student? Pretty average student, A's, B's, um, C's. But his aunt reports that he was failing all of his classes. Because they put him in a different school with no IEP. So they put him in a regular classroom setting and but, he but did not do well. But you're saying he's doing well in school when he's actually failing. And what I'm trying to ascertain here is if you're just in abject denial of what's going on here. And this is important because mm -hmm. there's going to be a determination as to whether or not he should be in jail or a psych ward, whether he should be tried as an adult or whether he should be tried as a child. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm trained as a forensic psychologist. Mm -hmm. So I've spent a, a fair amount of time in making just exactly this kind of determination. And yeah. I, I'm telling you, if, if I was involved in this case in the court, which I'm not, I would be having a hard time ascertaining whether or not you think he's actually fine, was a well-adjusted young man, and therefore should not be considered mentally ill and having done this from a dark place in his psyche, or if you're saying that he in fact is mentally ill and should be in a psychiatric facility instead of a, a penal situation. I, I'm not sure what it is your position is. Prior to all of this, my son was the picture perfect. He did know right from wrong and he did not need a mental hospital or any of that. I think that after all of this has happened and the trauma that he has had to face, something has definitely switched in him. He's not the same child as he was before. But I don't hear you saying with a stereotypical torturing or killing of small animals, which we know to be a really red flag, mm -hmm. um, in maladaptive behavior, in retrospect, I think I made a really bad decision in allowing him to continue to supervise a, a baby, which in fact wound up being killed. I wish I would have seen these things prior to now. I wish there would have been something that would have said, hey, you know, this is, this is a bad decision. Christina's 14-year-old son admitted to smothering his two younger siblings, but she claims investigators twisted her son's words. And we're gonna find out what she means by that because there were more, there's more than one explanation that he has given. And, and they report that he's given more than one explanation. So we'll talk about that when we come back. He's a completely different person. Something has gone way wrong here. When I hear you trivializing it, there's not one chance in hell I would turn the child back over to you. And later, tell me what he said when you told him Desiree is dead. This is when I started to question things. There was nothing there. According to court documents, the teen confessed to killing his younger siblings after a relative told investigators he also mutilated a kitten. The incident involving the kitten, that was when Nick was really wanting to talk to me and he was being prevented to do that by the Department of Child Services and that didn't sit well with him. He didn't realize what he was doing and he squeezed the kitten a little too hard and it passed away. I have never seen my son be violent, no. We agree something's gone terribly wrong here. Two children have lost their lives. And I am very troubled. I, I fully expect you to want to protect your son and advocate and stand up for him.
Even you admit that it was by his hand that these two children are dead. Yes. Okay. Um, but I hear you trivializing and justify, well, he may have squeezed a kitten too hard. This kitten's intestines were coming out, had three holes in its head. He didn't just, oh, whoops. He mutilated this animal and killed it. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. This is a troubled young man, true? Yeah, yeah he is definitely troubled, and, and that's what I really want people to understand is that, you know, up until all this that had happened, he had not been like this. <clears throat> and now that this has happened, he's a completely different person. But see, when I hear you trivializing it, justifying it, minimizing it, there's not one chance in hell I would turn the child back over to you because I'm saying, you, you don't get it. You know, I love my kids unconditionally, and that means that I have to support them. That doesn't mean that I have to agree or that I have to accept or that I have to forgive, but I do have to support him. I want to take a look at some things that, that you have refuted here. On 9-11-2017, according to news, Great Aunt described Nicholas as having a bad temper, sometimes reminded her of the Hulk. And you say, no, he's fun-loving, lovable, and helpful. Mm -hmm. And according to the news, Nick mutilated not one but two kittens. And you say, well, Nick was upset because he wanted to talk to his mom and DCS prevented that. And he may have squeezed the kitten too hard and it passed away. But I took that very seriously. Like I said, I got on the phone immediately trying to get him help right then and there. I have said to law enforcement and, and even to the judges, if you truly believe that my son is so full of anger and so full of, you know, who knows what, unpredictability. Why do you have him in a juvenile facility where he can hurt other children instead of in the secure mental institution where I had him, where they know how to treat him and keep him safe? Which is a fair question, except you're defusing, trivializing, and minimizing the very things that would trigger that kind of care for him because you said, oh, no, he, he squeezed a kitten and it passed away. He didn't squeeze a kitten and it passed away. He mutilated, tortured, and killed the cat. I mean, that's what happened. Uh, 12, 13, 17, according to the news, Nick told detectives he saved siblings from hell and the chains of fire. You say that's taken out of context by investigators. Nick was talking about something he watched on TV. Uh, 12, 13, 17, according to the news, Nick told detectives didn't want siblings to live in hell that he had to live in to find hell as chores, which we mentioned. You said taken out of context because he always asked to do chores. Yeah. In looking back at this, what did you miss? I think I missed the signs of what other people perceived as possible depression. If he would have been evaluated and we would have known and the department would have allowed me to do what the mother instinct was and just allow me to have him evaluated, I think maybe Nathaniel's death would have been prevented. Mm -hmm. Tell me exactly, exactly what he said and did when you told him Desiree is dead. This is, this is when I started to question things. The moment I walked in, Nick said to me, Mom, where's Desiree? I began to cry and I was telling him, Desiree is home, just not our home any longer. Um, that she had passed away and that she was in her forever home. And my son was just spaced. I mean, there was like, there was no affect. There was nothing there. And what I noticed is just one tear coming from my son's eye. And then he looks over at my mom and says, can I watch my TV? It was just that disconnect. Are, are you telling me that this child was a good candidate to babysit your 11-month-old? He wasn't babysitting him. He took Nathaniel to his room, which is right by my room, to put him down for bed. Christina says that she wants her teenage son to be reintroduced to his family after he gets help and recovers from his trauma. We're going to talk about that after the break, and I'm going to add someone to the conversation that deals with these situations and circumstances every day of his professional life. We'll be right back.
I'm sure there are things you might have missed through his childhood. There's nothing that sticks out to me. It's, you know, that's if... the problem. It doesn't stick out to you. I do not think that my son should be in jail. I believe that keeping him in a mental health facility to serve out justice would be the correct way of handling this. I am hopeful that at some point in Nick's life, he's able to forgive himself and that we are still family and he will be welcomed. Joining us now is Dr. Charles Sophie. He's a member of our Blue Ribbon Advisory Board here. He's board certified in three clinical specialties, adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and family practice. And he's also the medical director for DCFS here in Los Angeles. And that is the biggest DCFS in the entire country. You sit in a position to have to deal with this every day. What are you hearing? Well, I'm, I'm hearing a mother who really isn't clued in at all to really what's going on. Whether that's on purpose or whether that's because you, you're just in another place. But a lot of this is going on in front of you and you, you don't seem to own it. I'm sure there are things you might have missed through his childhood of rage and violence. No? There could have been, um, but I don't, there's nothing that sticks out to me. Um, and, and, you and so know, that's if, the problem. It doesn't stick out to you. In fact, you described him, you said he is a dream child. Yeah. Every mom's dream child. And I, I guarantee you, I have never seen a child that was a dream child from zero to 14 and then murdered a sibling. Be, it just doesn't come out of the blue. There are ramp up behaviors. What were those behaviors or how did you miss them? Because if you are reunited with the child with the same lack of problem recognition uh, abilities, why would we predict anything different with her? That's the question that, that DCF is going to ask, right? right? But the very fact that you say that he's a good student and he's failing, that's enough for the department to say she can't even clue in to his academics. No, but they have proved that he was a good student prior to then, all of this. But not now. Yes, not now. He's not. But you no. forget that part. Mm -hmm. yeah, so when because you, he's a different person now. He's, but he's not. not. That's the problem. He's not. He's, he was this kid all along. It he, didn't, then he must have been really good at hiding it. He was very good at hiding it. Yeah. I think he wanted to please you and make you happy. You have new boyfriends, you have new babies. He's behind, but he's still cleaning up the house. He's still doing your chores. He's still doing your dirty work to make you happy. Yeah. But you're I missing all of that. No, I see that and now that you put it in that perspective. Because he's, it's always been how to keep mom happy. Until he then took your fun away and he killed your kids. I would have never wanted to do that to any of my kids. My kids are my world. You know, what Dr. Sophie is telling you is probably the best argument that I've heard for him needing psychiatric care instead of incarceration. I want to read a, a statement from Christina's aunt. She says, he made remarks that scared me. He said, you might be better off if somebody came in the house and murdered you tonight. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. She says her mom. Were you drinking and doing drugs with her? No. Slept with her friend's ex. I didn't have sex with the boy. Then why were you guys up in the bedroom together? That's tomorrow. Now, I want to read a, a statement from Christina's aunt. Um, she says, when Nick first came, he didn't understand that it was okay to not be perfect. He made remarks that scared me. He said, you know, you might be better off if somebody came in the house and murdered you tonight. Your heart is not good. You've got a leg missing. Your life has to be miserable. I said, my life is not miserable, I'm happy. He asked, you can be happy if you're not perfect? She's talking about the fact that 
he looked at her who has had an amputation, uh, has heart disease, and said, you know, you're, you're flawed. Somebody should just come in and kill you. And so she posits the fact that in his distorted mind, you know, he may have looked particularly at Nathaniel, who is your stepchild, who was born with some problems at birth. Did he look at him and say, you know, you have problems. You could, you're not perfect. You'd be better off dead. As distorted as that sounds, which again argues for the fact that this is a child that needs help, not punishment. I think you need to own this situation and say, you know, I, I, I missed this and I made a huge mistake by being in denial and allowing him access to this second baby and I get it, please help my son. But if your problem recognition skills don't improve and your problem solving skills to intervene when something happens don't improve, they will never reunify you with your children. It will never happen, but it can happen if you say I'm taking the blinders off and calling it as it is. So. I'm telling you, I think you've got to come present and start getting very realistic about the harsh realities here. I think he is in need of serious help, and I don't think he should be tried as an adult. I think he should be tried as an adolescent, and I think he should be sent to a psychiatric facility for whatever time is necessary to get him help. I That's my position. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay, we're going to have to stop, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the mysterious case of a missing mother. We're going to find out why the host of the popular podcast, Up and Vanished, believes foul play may be involved. We'll be right back. Twenty-nine-year-old Crystal Ann Reisinger dropped off the face of the earth last July. When I heard that a person could go missing from such a small place, there's just red flags with that. She's been missing five times before and shown up at Disneyland. Maybe we should check Disneyland. I know Crystal was killed, and I know for a fact people are covering this up. Crystal Ann Reisinger left the busy city life in search of religious enlightenment, hoping that Crestone Colorado's spiritual centers would bring her happiness and peace. But this mother of a five-year-old daughter who is described as loving, kind, and generous disappeared without a trace on July 13th, 2016. Police tracking hot new leads in the case of a missing mom. 29-year-old Crystal Ann Reisinger dropped off the face of the earth last July. She was living in Crestone, a town of less than a thousand people in South Central Colorado. One day around July 13th, 2016, she vanished in what police call suspected foul play. She didn't just take off for a walk and not come back. She left everything that she owned behind. Inside her apartment, fresh food and her cell phone. This is the last place she was seen. It's called a drum circle. It's part religious ceremony, part party. We all know in our hearts somebody did something bad to her. We're going to keep going until we get resolution. Well, now, the host of the popular podcast, Up and Vanished, Payne Lindsay, is looking into Crystal's disappearance, hoping to break this cold case open after two years and no answers. Crystal was a very unique person. She was very spiritual. She was an artist. She was also a lost soul. All those unique parts of Crystal are what drew me to the story. In Crestone, a lot of people move there to get away from law enforcement. So it's not in everyone's nature to go running to the cops. There is this sort of dark underbelly to Crestone. And unfortunately, Crystal got wrapped up in that. A few more players emerged, and I gave them all nicknames. Let's start with Calvin. I believe that she was killed, okay? In the police report, it says that Catfish John 
was the last person to see her. He calls himself Catfish John because the Grateful Dead did a cover of a song called Catfish John. Hello, brother. Hey, man, this is John. Yeah. Catfish John's version of the story has so many contradictions. One minute he's telling me that she was last seen at the mall. She was at Disneyland. Then he's telling me that she's some FBI informant. I had nothing to do with this. She's been missing five times before and shown up at Disneyland. Maybe we should check Disneyland. I know Crystal was killed. And I know for a fact people are covered. A strong suspicion that things weren't what they seemed. I know there are people out there that know what happened to her. I want people to know that we are never going to forget. Help us, please. Well, Eli, I'm, I'm glad to have you here, and I'm sorry that you're going through this. When you talked to her four days before she went missing, she was obviously very upset at what had happened, right? Yes. What she told me uh, was there was two individuals that she was positively able to identify. And she was positive that there were more uh, men there present, but she wasn't able to identify him uh, due to the nature of the drugging. The Suffolk County Sheriff, Dan Warwick, is joining us on the phone today. Uh, so, Sheriff Warwick, thank you for joining us. Uh, this case is open and is being worked, correct? Yes, it is. Um, I do believe that it had gone cold for a while but I believe that podcast has brought some more, some more value to what we've been working here. Can you tell us, do you have any suspects or persons of interest in the disappearance of Crystal Ann Reisinger at this point? We do. If you have any information on the disappearance of Crystal Ann Reisinger, call the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department at 719-655-2525 or email dwarwick at sawwitchcounty-co.gov and include Crystal in the subject line. And you can listen to season two of Up and Vanished about the disappearance of Crystal Ann Reisinger on Apple Podcasts. Okay. Thank you so much Thanks, for Dr. being here. Dr. Warwick, thank you so much, Chef. Yes. Uh, speaking of Apple Podcasts, stand by. When we come back, I'm gonna tell you about a new podcast that I'm excited about. Next, we'll be right back. Well, I've got something that I'm excited about that I've been working on for a good while, and it's a new podcast that I'm starting. Mine is called Fill in the Blanks, which I think is kind of clever. Uh, my son Jordan came up with that, Fill in the Blanks. Now, it's completely different than the show, and I think it's going to give us a chance to share some time together in a really different way that's going to be both entertaining and still informative. This will give you an idea of what I'm doing. This is my first podcast ever. It's very podcasty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Candid. I'm going to get really intimate here. I'd say I've had what could maybe be called a sex addiction. Off the cuff. I didn't like misery. It scared the out of me. My ex-husband said after he saw misery that he didn't see anything unusual up there on his yeah. yeah. Dr. Phil McGraw has uniquely in-depth conversations with the world's most interesting. Does it bother you that some people define you as Oprah's friend? Relevant. Kim Kardashian. If she breaks wind in a public place, it's a major news event. <laughs> and accomplished people. I've had my share of incidents. With wit and irreverent humor. You worked as an undercover security guard? I did see a dude walk out with a lawnmower one time. <laughs> Meet the real people behind the public image. You planned to have a baby at 16. Yeah, I did. Why? I wanted a baby at 13. No social mask. We were a mailman. In the hood, first of the month, everybody gets a check. I told people I could bring it early if I could get a cut. <laughs> Just real talk from the world's leading experts. I actually worked for the NFL as a sidelines concussion doctor. To the celebrities. My mother would always say, look, because of dyslexia, you you're going to have to work twice as hard as the other kids. Relatable. My dad was my best friend. To watch somebody so strong become so weak. Couldn't fix it. I couldn't help him. With an interactive website that extends beyond the podcast, Dr. Phil McGraw is definitely going to fill in the blanks. Can you turn his mic off? <laughs> Somebody pull the plug on this guy.
Well, I hope it looks fun and interesting because I've been having a blast doing it because I get to talk without having to solve problems. And now listen up because I want to tell you how this works. On your phone or iPad, you click on this purple icon, you see, and it has the word podcast under it. Click on it, and then in order to find mine, go to where it says search. See the little magnifying glass? Then just type in fill in the blanks. Okay, that's P-H-I-L in the blanks. Click search then, and my podcast comes up, and then you hit the subscribe button. Bang. Now, remember, this is free. It doesn't cost anything. After you subscribe, then every time a new episode posts, you'll get a little notification so you don't miss out. And if you're on your computer, you just go to applepodcast.com slash Dr. Phil to hear a preview. And make sure you subscribe to get our first full episode for free, as I say, on January 8th. Now, uh, you can also find more information about the podcast at drphillintheblanks.com, which is a website that has all kinds of information on there. So you guys will do this, right? Yeah. You'll listen to this? We have a really, I really have a lot of fun people, and you're going to find out things about them that you do not know, because I know how to ask questions <laughs> nobody else knows. I want to thank all of my guests today. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Yeah.